We welcome you into week 10 of the Mike Turner Show. Hello, everyone. I'm the voice of the Eagles, Adam Cavalier, alongside Carson, <clears throat> head football coach, Mike Turner. And Mike, uh, a frustrating one to close out the home schedule at Mossy Creek. You fall uh, 40 to 21 to the Lenore Ryan Bears, number 21 team in the country, in a game marred by turnovers. Seven giveaways on the day, two picks, five fumbles. Uh, Obviously, that played a, a major factor. What happened? How do you sum up uh, what went down Saturday against the Bears? I don't know. I, I thought our kids played hard. Uh, I thought they played uh, with heart about them, uh, uh, with the desire and, and the way that you wanted to play. Uh, our defense was outstanding there in the first half, uh, and we had chances to make plays, and, and we get a 21-14 to 14 lead and had a chance to go up uh, 28 to 14 uh, in the first half. I think we had two fumbles and a an interception, and and that's not us. We've taken care of the football uh, so well in the last few weeks, especially uh, even in different kinds of weather. And yesterday was a perfect day. So we, I've, I've watched the video. It wasn't like it were great hits that did it or whatever. Just the ball got loose, and uh, you know we're going in to score for one time. We're we're coming out. Had another chance to throw and score. So. Uh, I don't know. I, I just, uh, it, it's one of those things that it makes it hard to overcome. Uh, you can overcome them. Absolutely, you can overcome them. Uh, but when they pile up like five fumbles and two interceptions, that makes it hard. Uh, that, that puts your defense back on the field way too early, uh, puts them in a bind, and that's frustrating to them, I know. Uh, but this is a football team, and this is a football team that, that uh, we talked about in that locker room yesterday. Our, our deal right now is, is to, get lined up for Monday, and finish strong this week. You, uh, you talk about how uncommon turnovers have been this year, 12th fewest in the country uh, coming into that game, especially for an option team. Right. You're accustomed to option teams, fumbles happen, um, and they hadn't this Well, year. To, for Carson Newman to be the, in, in the top 15 of the least turnovers in America's offense is probably a, a number one time in our, our history of this program since we've been running the option, I would think. Uh, I've been very, very proud of how they've, how they've taken care of the football, taken great care, but still played wide open. And, uh, and yesterday, uh, I thought we were playing wide open on offense and wide open on defense, and, uh, and, and we just kept uh, shooting ourselves in the foot. How much of that do you owe to potentially just fighting for extra yards, trying to get every last drop out of uh, uh, a run? Well, I don't, I don't think you can ever blame that for anything. I, I think you fight for every inch you get, and that's, that's the mentality you want your kids to have. And, but you have to protect the football. You know when you're going into traffic, you know when you're about to get hit. It's not a one arm on the football. It's, it's every arm you've got and every hand you've got on the ball to protect it. Uh, a first half where you lead, 21-14, jumped out <coughs> to a 21-7 lead at one point before Lenore Ryan uh, made its basketball-like run, 33 uh, nothing. We're causing some chaos defensively and some seniors stepping up in their final game uh, at Berktar Stadium. Tamoris Coates and Mario Mezier both make plays defensively uh, to set you up for touchdowns. What about the job of your seniors, 15 of them on senior day? Well, it was great to see those kids out there together and locked arm in arm there before the, the coin toss. And, and it was great to see how hard they played for each other. And then, and halftime bragged on them how they were honoring those kids, and, and they did honor them, and they do respect them, and they love them, and, and, they, and they did want them to go out. Uh, they've got another chance for them to go out right. That's coming up this week. Uh, but, of course, a guy like Timo, and he's made plays, and, and uh, Mario made big plays Saturday, and Diaz is always a warrior back there in the secondary, so been very proud of those kids. Carson Newman falls to Lenore Ryan, 40-21. to 21. We'll break down the first half when we get back after this on the Mike Turner. I joined the Guard for the simple fact that I could be home and also in the military. So I can have a civilian job and also in the military. Fire low! I 
would tell somebody who's trying to join the guard, think about it, uh, that it's a great opportunity. Opportunities for school, uh, training, discipline, leadership. There's a lot of opportunities. It, it broadens your, your spectrum of life. Back on the Mike Turner Show is Carson Newman Falls to the Lenore Ryan Bears on Senior Day, 40 to 21. I'm Adam Cavalier alongside Carson Newman head football coach Mike Turner. Mike, first half had some miscues, but uh, were able to grab a two touchdown lead against Lenore Ryan, uh, largest deficit the, that the Bears have faced had faced to this point in the season, uh, and did it in all three phases: defense, special teams, and offense. Really, all clicking in that first half. What was the key to weathering an early punch, but making some stuff happen, especially defensively with Tamoris Coates recovering a scoop and score to sit you on the front foot? Well, I, I think it's just uh, the excitement of those kids playing hard, uh, expecting to make things happen. Now, there, there's, a, there's a thing in this game about you can go play football, but if you go play expecting great things to happen, there's a pretty good chance they will. Uh, and, and, and I thought Saturday our kids were expecting great things to happen. They were trying to make plays. Uh, they were trying to extend drives. They were trying to, you know, uh, uh, get them three and out and those kind of things. And I thought our kicking game uh, much and much improved over a week ago. No, no doubt about it. So, uh, you know, we had to think. We had it going in the right direction. We'd made, still made some big mistakes there that cost us in the first half. But felt like we had. Uh, uh, we knew that <clears throat> Lenore Ryan wasn't done by any means. Somebody with that that record and. Uh, that kind of program that they have and the way they're working, they were not going to be done at all. But we want to come out and start to start the third quarter strong, and uh, and and you know it was it was an opportunity. They they took the ball and drove it, and they scored first blood in the third quarter. Uh, a first half that featured <clears throat> an interception by Mario Mezier, uh and you get to utilize a pump block for the first time all season. Zach Talley shoots in uh, to set you up for a score. How about the job of you mentioned the special teams vastly improved. To do something that it hasn't done yet this year. Oh, that, that, was, that was outstanding, and you know we we talked last week that we didn't flip the field, all right. And this week we had our chances and, and probably did flip the field. Uh, maybe a couple more times in the second half would have been been a big difference. But uh, very very proud of the, the resilience of that group and Coach Goss. Uh, they went the way they went back to work and got some things done. Tamoris Coates a 15 tackle day on his senior day, most tackles in a single game since Jacob Coleman had. Uh, 17 against Tusculum in 2013. Uh, he's got more than 90 for his senior season. He's got 16 tackles for loss. That's tied for second all-time in a single season in school history. What has he done to put himself in a position to earn some postseason laurels? Well, he in, in, in the past, he'd been around some good people that set good examples for him. All right, and uh, one of them came to the office yesterday, Shaheem Stupart, you know, to be there at the game and, su and support uh, Timo and uh, – it's just great to see him continue. You know, he, he's a guy that doesn't have an up and down in him. Okay, he's an up. And he's a guy that's going to fight through things and fight through frustration and, uh, and those kind of things that are going to happen. But, but he's a guy that's going to be the steadiest. Eagles let it. 21-14 at the halftime break, and we take a look at those <clears> first <throat> half highlights. Third down, nine to go. Bears left hash at their own 38. Willingham from the gun. Blitz comes from the backside. Henderson, and the Eagles get him. Antonio Henderson and Montel Presley, a sack back to the 30-yard line. LR gives up the fewest sacks in the conference, but Presley and Henderson from the backside. Second and call it two for the Bears as they go to that unbalanced line to the right. Willingham takes, handoff to one of the flankers to the right side, and a big gain for Huff. Huff. Inside the 15 and 10, and he's upended at the kneecaps. Falls into the end zone. Touchdown, Lenore Ryan. Second and nine Bears. Left hash out of the flex boat. Ground 21. It's a reverse and a toss sweep. The ball's out. Still free. It's going to be picked up in the end zone. Scoop and score. Touchdown, Carson Newman to Morris. Johnny on the spot. Takes it to the house. LR went for the trickery on a double reverse. TJ Smith had it pop into the air. The ball got kicked around, and then Coates picked it up to the goal line. Tackle. It led for a first down. Bears back to the flex bone in the 7-7 ball game with 335 to play in the first quarter. Willingham from under center. Play fake to the dive back. Willingham back to pass. He called the left sideline. That's picked off. Mario Mezier high points it along the right side. Mezier up across the 45 numbers right side, and he's grabbed. 
by Riley McGee and halts it up to the 47. Surveys a four-man front. Drops down under center, takes the snap, gives the dive to two Johnson and Johnson. Untouched over the right side. Touchdown, Carson Newman. A little explosion out of toot. And he gives the Eagles the lead, 13 to seven. Three seconds into the second quarter. Willingham back in gun. He's been sacked on the last two third and longs for the Bears. He'll roll the pocket left. Eagles rush four. Willingham sets up. He's hit. He goes down. Brian Bimbrey again. He is a man among boys today. That's again holding strong. Owen back to punt for the Bears. Sees it. Eagles block it. Zach Talley got a piece of it. And the Eagles will take over at the 15. Owen recovers it. Zach Talley sells out and gets the punt block. Jackson and Wimbush, the split backs behind Evans. McCarrick tight in motion to the left. Make the toss to Wimbush. QB bootleg Evans. He's wide open. Evans high stepping his way to the house. Touchdown, Carson Newman. The naked QB bootleg for Derek Evans finds Pater from 15 yards out. 20 to 7. Eagles on top with 8.16 to play in the second. Norwood boots away. Gorgeous kick to Williams, who receives it the goal line right side. Williams, a good burst. He's into the second level. Marcus Williams, a stiff arm across the 40. Williams cuts back right at midfield. Williams into bear territory. He comes to a halt down at the Lenore Ryan 45. Jay Saltbaugh, 8 for 11 on field goals this year. We'll try to boot a 35 yarder from the right hash. Snap comes back, hold is down. The kick is blocked and grabbed by Jaquan Smith. Smith to the right sideline across the 20, a stiff arm up to the 22. And the Eagles special teams again, points off the board with 26.7 ticks left in the second quarter. Those are the first half highlights. Eagles were up 21-14 at the halftime break. Mike Turner. Uh, some things went wrong in that first half, but by and large, a quality first 30 minutes uh, out of your group. What was the halftime locker room like? How did you address things? Well, I, I thought the locker room was great. I thought our coaches uh, involved with our kids. Uh, kids are responsive. Um, still knew that we had made some mistakes, and we tried to adjust some things to make sure that we didn't have those show up again. Uh, we just wanted them to come back out and play, okay? and, and uh, and we had talked to him about the, before the game about playing wide open, and that's the way we need to come back in the third quarter and play wide open and not play uh, um, to maintain, but to play, uh, go be aggressive and be aggressive on every snap. Felt like you were a little more multiple uh, this week than in weeks past. Saw some plays that you hadn't utilized before. Uh, the one that really sticks out was on a fourth down play, a wheel route to Devon Moore uh, out of some motion. Right. Well, it was, uh, you know, they were in man coverage, and, and uh, you know, you hope what you throw against man coverage are man beaters. And when you throw a slant and a swing, uh, you throw a slant and a swing, you hope that's one of the best routes. And we had thrown it a couple snaps before and came back this time and used the motion. And, 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 and we needed for our kids to see that, hey, it's fourth down, we're going to go for it. Uh, you know, not holding anything back, and there's no need to hold anything back. And, and uh, so we were trying to give it our best shot. You need to drive to the trademark office right now and just put a patent on. Patent on. If you're man, if you're in man, you've got to be man beaters. That's it, buddy. That's exactly <laughs> it. Might all get a bumper sticker for that. That's right. Um, a, a second half pockmarked by turnovers. Three cool. first three drives uh, had three giveaways. Uh, was there one that you felt was more backbreaking than the others? Well, I thought all three were backbreakers because you were driving the football on all three of them. Uh, we, we were going to throw a, a play action pass and uh, we had a breakdown in uh, protection and forced Derek out of the pocket and and you know uh, obviously the best thing for him to have done was just throw the ball away and he was going to try to make a play and, and got grabbed and slung and when he did he fumbled. Uh, we had the other two situations that we had made positive yardage and uh, uh, you know had a, had a little play action pass with the back out of the backfield that got us a first down. Uh, to keep a drive alive, and, and again, you're trying to keep it to where uh, the thing we stress this week with our offense is the importance of first down. Okay, we, we had to make better first down percentages than we had done in the past and then be more conscious of third down conversion. Uh, at first, we were getting that done in the first half, and part of the, in the third quarter, we were getting that done as long as we hold on to the football. 
Eagles fall to Lenore Ryan, 40 to 21. Second half highlights head your way. Uh, in the next segment, that's when we come back after these messages on The Mike Turner Show. Serving East Tennessee for 40 years, Magaha Electric is the perfect choice for all your electrical projects. Magaha Electric specializes in commercial, retail, manufacturing, residential, and industrial contracting needs. Magaha Electric can provide superior service, technical know-how, and realistic budgeting for any size project in a timely, cost-effective manner. Visit MagahaElectric.com for all your electrical contracting needs. Magaha Electric. Electric, your East Tennessee electrical contracting source. Back on the Mike Turner Show as Carson Newman falls on senior day, 40-21 to 21 to number 21, Lenore Ryan. Uh, I'm Adam Cavalier, the voice of the Eagles, alongside Carson Newman head football coach Mike Turner. Mike, a, a second half that uh, at the end of the day reels, really just boils down to you not having the football. Uh, I think LR ran triple the number of plays that you did uh, uh, in the second half, and for the day, 90 plays for the Bears. Uh, you only had the football for 52. Right. Um, again, we can beat the dead hurt horse about turnovers all you want, but you can't win a game if you don't have the football. If you don't have the football and you're not keeping drives alive, and you, you know, um, <clears throat> we had those we had those opportunities to keep those drives alive. We had those opportunities to go make big plays. Uh, we didn't do that. Uh, when you when you turn the ball over, it's it's a letdown. It's a letdown on offense. A letdown on defense. Uh, you know, and, and uh, you football will always be about field position. No matter what kind of game it is, it's about field position. And uh, you you don't want the defense to take it on a on a short field or something like that. I think one time we gave it to them for a short field. Uh, the rest of the times we were making positive yardage and working it past midfield. But uh, you know. Uh, you, you can't get the 75, 85, 90 snaps we want if you don't have the ball. And Lenore Ryan, to their credit, they, uh, they took the football when they got it, and they maintained drives, and they got yardage, and they, they were not in a hurry. They were working the clock as well as, as like we would normally do if we were driving the football and keeping their defense off the field. Uh, had another senior make some plays, especially in the second half. Mario Mezier. Uh, ends up with five pass breakups, six passes defensed on the day with his interception from the first half. That's the second most uh, in a single game in school history behind behind Deontay Bolden's uh, day against Newberry in 2003. Um, what about another kid in his final game at Mossy Creek who does some things that you know haven't been done too frequently in the history of this program? Well, he's a, he's a kid that came to play, and he's a kid that had a responsibility. There's a lot of times that. We'll put those guys on an island by themselves, and they've got to make a stand so that, you know, we can do some other things inside. And he, he had a big assignment most of the day, and he was uh, on the spot and made plays. Uh, and, you know, you can't make those plays if you're not willing to do it aggressively. Okay, if you sit back and say, well, I'm afraid this will happen or this will happen, uh, you're going to let them march the ball down the field. And, and our kids are going after the ball like we want them to, being very aggressive with it. Uh, smart, but aggressive, and uh, that's, that's how you stop drives. Carson Newman, Carson Newman ends up falling to Lenore Ryan, 40-21. to 21. Here are those second-half highlights. Trying to add to a 21-20 lead on the first possession of the second half for the Eagles. Evans, under center, one man in the back, with Jackson in motion. They throw it his way, right side. That's complete. Jackson picks up first down yardage, loses the football, and the Bears have it. Jackson coughs it up along the right sideline, and Burgess recovers. Back, flank reach way out of the flex bone. Wide receiver wide to the left, line shifts. Offside to the left. Willingham takes, play fake on the dive, drops back to pass. Deep ball, T.J. Smith, middle of the field. He grabs it, sidesteps Mario Mezier, and races to the left boundary. Touchdown, Bears. Mario Mezier laid out, tried to deflect it, but T.J. Smith had receivable position on the skinny post. He houses it from 56 yards away, and the Bears have the lead, 26 to 21. First and 10, Carson Newman. Evans, back to pass, he's pressure, rolls left, looking to throw, gets gummed up by Sherrod Williams. Evans lost the football, it's still free, and the Bears get it. Eagles turn it over for a fifth time today. Sherrod Williams forced and recovered. Second and 10 Bears on their own 31. Willingham, throwback screen, left side, that's blown up. Mitchell grabs it, 
but Jason Cook Calhoun was there as well, and he slings him down for a loss back to the 21st First and goal. Bears give it up the middle to Jackson. Jackson piling his way toward the goal line, and he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Lenore Ryan. 29 unanswered points for the Bears. And Lenore Ryan is up 39-21 on Carson Newman with 4.15 to play in the fourth quarter. Back on the Mike Turner Show as Carson Newman falls on Senior Day to the Lenore Ryan Bears. It's time now for our Eagle Spotlight, and this week we put it on one of Carson Newman's seniors in Mario Mezier. Tanner Swift has more. Prior to transferring to Carson Newman two years ago, defensive back Mario Mezier led all California JUCO players in interceptions. Now here as an Eagle at Mossy Creek, he wants to leave a great legacy behind as his senior year is coming to a close. The Miami, Florida native wants to be remembered by a few things, but it's not necessarily the on-field statistics. Uh, I just try to just show them the way just by action. You don't always have to be a leader by speaking. It can also be done by action as well, because I'm not a speaking type of leader, so I like to get it done by actions. The only thing I really want to leave is my leadership as, you know, as I do on the field, not much as a talker, but my own, um, my actions. Mezier credits his senior year success to new defensive backs coach Antonio Goss, who mentioned that he has learned a lot in just a few short months. And that experience of Goss is unmatched due to his expertise. He taught, he taught a lot. With, with, with him being here like for a short period of time, just for the fall, well, in the summer too as well, he taught a lot. He taught, he taught us a lot of you know, like new technique because he was a former NFL player. So like with the blocking shed and getting off blocks, he made a big impact on that because we really needed to work on that. The defensive back has recorded a pair of takeaways in 2018, and Coach Goss credits Mezier's leadership and isn't too worried about him not being as vocal mentioning the dynamic of CN's ability for the seniors' impact. I think you have all different kinds out there, and I think you do need all different kinds on the football team. And like you say, he's won by action. So, you know, you got guys that are quiet, that's like him, that goes by action, but they see a lot. And for him, that's what you do. You be the first ones up in the line. He's there. Need what you need to uh, – He's there doing what you need to be done from a uh, player's point of view for other players can watch and just follow his lead. He has a funny side about him. <laughs> you know, he enjoys life. You know, he has fun. He has his own uh, demeanor, which is, you know, it's Mario's way. And uh, that's something I think is good because I think everybody is different. Everybody does beat to a different drum, but everybody's on that same page where we are a team. Goss said he's learned quite a bit about the senior defensive back, but he remembers the first time he was introduced to Mezier as soon as he stepped on campus. Our first conversation, we had a great conversation. And, you know, he was looking for the opportunity his senior year coming up. Uh, we just talked a little bit about personal life, get, just getting to know one another, because I think that's the most important thing, of just making sure where he's coming from, making sure where I'm coming from. And we was on the same page. Uh, we love what we're doing. So it was all about hard working, what can make me get better, what do I need to do to you to get you better, and uh, let's go and try to win some games. He just taught me how to fight, like fight adversity when, um, when adversity hit. He taught me how to, you know, like prepare for it and just fight, never back down and stand 10 toes down. Coach Goss stressed the importance of life at CN about being more than just X's and O's. It was a quick, indecisive, and simple answer when summing up Mezier's time as an Eagle. Hard worker, take advantage of opportunities, uh, take advantage every day, you know, that's on the field and off the field, getting a college degree, you know, have an opportunity to play what he loves and have an opportunity to leave it and have an opportunity to bond with people that are taken beyond the football field and take them beyond what's happened here at Carson Newman, which would be a better man of Christ. Head coach Mike Turner also played a huge role in Mezier's development here at Carson Newman after taking over the head coaching job in 2017. It was also the same year that Mezier transferred in, mentioning the biggest changes for him were learning on how to become a family as well as remain a unit. It was something the program carried on well into this season with its motto, United 18. For the Mike Turner Show, I'm Tanner Swift. All right, thank you very much, Tanner and Mike Turner, Mario Mezier. We already talked about him a little bit for uh, what he did on the field, but uh, an instrumental part of this defense and one of four senior starters back there who 
uh, really has come along and playing probably the best football of his career here at the tail end of his senior year. Well, that's true, and you know we brought him in a, to get him in here in a hurry a year ago, and to, to get him fit in. To, uh, that it was an emergency fit, and uh, he's become a very, very solid player. Uh, he's become a very, very uh, accountable young man that that you know you can count on, and and what a way for him to. Uh, be in the spotlight and also have played like he was yesterday. A, uh, a senior class, not the biggest one out there, uh, 15 seniors. What has this group meant to you in your second year as a head coach? Well, those are, those are kids that were here uh, when I was assistant coach and, and, and got to know them a little bit and watched them grow and how they've come along. And then in the last two years as a head coach, uh, saw how uh, accountable they were, how they dependable they were. and. You know, you've got kids of all varieties in that group. Yeah. You've got starters, you've got backups, you've got guys that probably didn't get to play as much, but they're part of that football team. Their role on that team and their importance to that team was has been very critical. You turn your attention now to another lengthy road trip in a minute since you had to take one of those. Uh, get to head over to Lumbee County in North Carolina and take on the UNC Pembroke Braves uh, in the, the finale. You talk about finishing strong, here's an opportunity. Uh, to finish strong, what's it take to have a, a good, solid effort against the Braves? I think it's some, I think it's a mindset of making sure, uh, you know, that we know where we are as a football team. We've had our disappointments. How you look at that adversity, uh, how you handle it like a man, how you handle it like a football team, and know that you do want to finish strong. Finish strong for those uh, seniors. Finish strong for this program. And you know. Take this week as, as a week of saying, hey, we're getting ready for the next season, and this is, this is the game. We're going we're to get ready to play this one, and we're going to finish strong as a football team and rally. Mike, pleasure as always. Thanks for the time. Thanks, Adam. I appreciate it. That's Carson Newman head football coach Mike Turner. I'm the voice of the Eagles, Adam Cavalier. This has been the Mike Turner Show. Thanks for watching.